I fight my opponent? Oh shit, it's late to the game with Guacamelee. Hey. And, and Chris and Eric. Hi guys. Which is us. Yep. We, Eric picked Guacamelee for today's episode four. And uh, why? Well, um, I, I had it. And as far as I know, we didn't do a video on it. Well, those are the stipulations for games to bring to this thing. <laughs> and I, I genuinely love this game. This game is fantastic. Um, and, you know, it was just the Super Bowl. We had a nice Super Bowl party with a bunch of snacks. And a classic snack that people seem to enjoy. Not me, but a lot of people. It's guacamole. Oh, guacamole. Yeah. And guacamole. Is this a melee brawling game? Yeah, it's like I a, just got that. Yeah, joke. it's like a side-scrolling platform and beat 'em up, pull um, puzzles. I never played this myself. I watched you and Josh play the crap out of this, oh, if this I remember so right. So good. Back in the many moons ago, when we all lived in one apartment. You should house. play this game. I think I, you there's would. There's so many Metroid-ish, yeah. like walk around side scrolly games. But this one is incredibly funny and incredibly well written. So tell me the plot of this game. Well, uh, Presidente's daughter has been, uh, you know, kidnapped, and you're you're killed by Kalaka, which is a uh, undead. That's a part of your throat. Your Kalaka. No, it's a bird's butt. Cloaca. You don't have one of those in your throat. I don't have a bird butt in my throat. Uh, how do you swallow eggs? Well, it acts as um, it acts as the butt and the vagina. Oh, interesting. The cloaca does. Oh. You know, there are people that would say the same thing about the human butt. <laughs> there are. There are those people who, who exist. <laughs> but anyway, Presidente's daughter is kidnapped by an evil undead Dia de los Muertos luchador skeleton guy. Okay. And, uh, yeah, he kind of kills you at the beginning, which you'll see. Uh, here's a lovely depiction of Jack Black in the middle square here. Oh, and not Nacho! Another thing that I've never seen. So here's the thing. Yeah. Here, here's a, th a weird thing about me. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think Lucador masks are very similar to like gimp masks, <laughs> and okay. and both of them sure. really really creep me out. Okay. And yeah. that, that's like one of those few things that if I see someone wearing them in public, it makes me a little uncomfortable because it's just like I I don't like it. Right. And it's weird because usually the only thing I don't like when I see people in public is when I can't see their eyes. Uh huh. And yeah, every, everything yeah. else is fine as long as I can see your eyes. But even though those have like the eyes, it's like the opposite. Usually, you can see only the eyes. Yeah, it's weird. But it, it's something to do with just like the, I don't know if it's the skin tightedness of it, yeah, or the latex, sure, or the the slight hard on that it insinuates. But slight. It's just, it it's weird. Uh, it, and it, it, it's, it's it, always yeah, it it's is. always made me uh, uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Not in like a sexual way. Okay. But just in, like, a I-don't-trust-that-person way. Okay. And I know that, like, the Luca Libre uh, wrestlers... It's a very rich, deep-seated Mexican wrestling tradition. Yeah, but and, they all look in, like a bunch of perverts, though. Well, I mean, a, a lot of pro wrestlers have had that look about them, you know? They, they've the, the perv character was actually a trope in pro wrestling a couple of times. Like an actual, that's that's just, it's like, okay, you're going to play the pervert. Yeah. You ever seen Goldust? No? Yeah. I mean, maybe? I don't know. The, the wrestler. I've seen Goldust. wrestling with you guys. I don't, I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I know who Kane was. Right. Okay, Kane. Yeah, he was the and Undertaker. And the Undertaker. Yeah, they were, they were brothers. They were, they were buddies. They were, they were canon brothers. They're not actual brothers. They're not actual brothers. But they were pretend brothers yeah, for the they, show. Yeah, for the storyline, they were brothers. So this is going to tie back into when I was saying that your XFL is going to have plot lines. I but really hope it doesn't. Th that's what it needs. I re well, I mean, it would it would be cool. It's going like to it's it. going to start off, and there's going to be like a 15 minute skit about whoever like the heel team is supposed to be. Right. They're going to all they're, no no they're going to be all deflating the balls of the other team. Oh wow! See that would be good. People would watch that. Mm, that would be good. Sports yeah. satire. Is a, is a very small niche audience because there's so few self-aware fans. Well, I mean, that, no, I mean, not not really because sports media has been uh, really on covering that kind of stuff. Like recently, they did the whole uh, 
Patriots uh, filming on the sidelines of the Bengals. I of did all see teams, that. that was weird. Of all teams, the Bengals—they're like the worst fucking team. Do you really need tape on them? <laughs> well, in that sort of a situation, it's probably they're doing it to more than just the Bengals. It's just whoever yeah. the one that was doing it at the Bengals is the one. They that were just caught. careless about it. It's like fuck it, it's the it, Bengals. It's like no one's watching this anyway. <laughs> so I'll just be slapdash about it. I'll cut corners. <laughs> And then and then you get caught. Yeah. In Cincinnati. Alright. So uh yeah, so you've been resurrected. I have been resurrected, uh, and given a sacred holy luchador mask. Okay, and it gives you magic powers. Yeah, I've got magic luchador powers now. But I'll unlock them as the game progresses. And and so once again, am I right I'm right in thinking it's like a Metroidvania ish. Set yeah, up where yeah. You're big overworld, and you and kind then of you have to go back, back bounce back and forth. But yeah, yeah, yeah ex- that's exactly what it is. Okay, it is a Metroidvania, but it is it's but it's it also, a good like, one. Like it has the the little beat 'em up things of kind of like the two D side scrolling fighting games yeah. of like the SNES. Yeah, because that's something that I don't. I, I go back and forth on in games is uh, whether I like seeing the enemy's health bar like that. Sure, um, you know because. I talk about what we were talking about earlier. Um, PUBG, you know, you never know how much damage you're doing to a player uh-huh. when you shoot them in PUBG. But in yeah. Apex Legends, you get the big yeah, burst the big, of number yeah. right above their heads. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, in Apex Legends, I like it. But in a game like Borderlands, I think it's gross and obnoxious. Sure. And I don't know if it's just because in Borderlands, it's like a bajillion numbers flying everywhere all at once. Yeah. And... Uh, well, I recently played uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, okay, and it has that it uh, as a feature too, the, okay. the floating health bars, and I really feel like it gave me a a, a kind of a shitty meta gaming uh, advantage because you can just see in, the health bar stealth. before you see the enemy. Yeah, like if I'm behind a wall, I can see them creeping up. Yes, but, like without having some kind of special vision. I always thought about that in uh, Skyrim too, mm. because not not that there's not already like a really easy way to metagame cheap stealth mechanics in that. Right. Which is, you know, get behind whatever door the enemy isn't programmed to go past. And then just crouch. <laughs> um, but you still you have the radar at the top that always shows you where the enemies are. And any yeah. type of game that's uh, a stealth game that's supposed to be like you navigating around hazards, you shouldn't be able to see those hazards through walls unless you wouldn't be able to get around them otherwise, you know? Sure. And uh, a, a patrolling guard is like, that's that's basics. Now, you know, Sam Fisher uh, knocked that out back in, like, perfectly back in, what, 2000 period, just 2000? 2000 period, yeah. It's either 2000 or 2001. I forget when the first Splinter Cell came out. Mm-hmm. It might have even been 99. So, somewhere around that, around that era. Man, that game had the best fucking lighting effects. Mm-hmm. It really did. Mm-hmm. And, and that's another thing that never really uh, grabbed me about this game. It is it is pretty. Oh, yeah, it's a gorgeous game. But it's one of this is one of those art styles that never, like, super struck me because it reminds me of uh, Cartoon Network. Oh, sure. And yeah, it, it just reminds me of every show on Cartoon Network from 2000 to 2015. One of those was, was a Lucha show. It was Mucha Lucha. Well, um... Is that based off of this, or is this based off of that in any way? No, okay. they, are, they are no related. Oh, here I had to go take my banana bread out of the oven. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, that, I've been that cooking the, a lot of banana I've bread. Been, I've been baking a lot of banana bread. Well, I had a lot of bananas. Okay. And I also had a lot of oranges and a lot of lemons. Okay. Which explains why I brought the orange and lemon squares to the Super Bowl party. I see. I used most of my lemons. You've been baking a whole bunch, then. I have been baking a whole, whole bunch. Do you enjoy baking? I, I, I do. I really, I, I really have come to love it. Okay. Yeah. Is that something you think you'd want to like pursue doing as a career later, or you just enjoy doing it at home? Probably. I've been looking to get out of my, my current career, you know? Uh, wow. But I, I still don't mind doing it. I just can't do it forever. It's hard to get paid for stalking these days, you know? It's what? Not everybody... <laughs> 
I'm like, yeah, I'm a freelance stalker. I get, I get paid. I boost people's self-esteem. They ask me to stalk them covertly, but not really get caught and then act offended when I do. Yeah, it's for like, basically you make most of your money off of friends of actors, not the actors themselves, but their friends who are worried oh, they're sure. going to commit suicide if they don't get another role. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so they just, it's just like, listen, just pretend to be super into this person for like a week. You watch this John Travolta movie, you come back and just do that, okay? Yeah, and you can paparazzi on the side. That's a joke about The Fanatic. Did you see that? I did not see that. Nobody did. I didn't even see it. Wow. I just saw the trailer and I was like, ugh. Ew. Yeah. I think he plays like a, a mentally challenged person. Oh, uh, sure, who's sure. A, who's obsessed with a uh, some movie star. Okay. It looked weird. Okay. And not good. Good, weird and not good. Okay, gotcha. So do you get to use your little uh, grab person and throw them in direction? Is that like a uh, thing you have to use to solve puzzles or is that just for funsies? Uh, that's just for funsies. That's for uh, the, my favorite. One of my favorite things to do is just grab an enemy and just throw them into a big group of enemies and just send them all flying. Okay. And it just disorients them all, which really comes in handy when you get to a lot of the bigger fights. Now, is this going to be a boss fight here? It is not. Does it have boss fights? It does. Does it have like gigantic boss fights that are ridiculous, or is it just uh, a lot of you the, against the another luchador? Mini bosses are. Uh, are we saying that right? Is it luchador? It's luchador. Luchador. Luchador with a ch. Yeah, with a ch. Okay. Not a k. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Luchador. Yeah. Do you have a favorite luchador? Well, of course you wouldn't because of the the whole I, the I whole mask the whole, I thing. I gave the whole speech yeah. thing. Don't, who's, don't, who's your favorite luchador? Don't worry, I was paying attention. My favorite luchador uh, actually died recently. It's very sad. That's very sad. It's very sad. What did he die of? Uh, I actually don't remember. Oh, that's even sadder. And it's even sadder. But uh, his name was La Parca, and he he used to come down to the ring like a jacket. Yeah, like a <laughs> yeah. Okay. His brother was La Pancho. No, it was <laughs> it wasn't. Um, but oh. he he came with. Uh, you seem to be dressed as a chicken. Now. I am. I I put on the La po- uh, El Pollo Loco suit. Is that uh, a Breaking Bad reference? No, that's Pollo's Hermanos. This is Pollo Loco. Anyway, you were talking about a very sad death. Very sad death. Yeah, La Parca, he used to come down to the ring dressed in, like, uh, a skeleton, like a Dia de los Muertos skeleton, but with a hood. And he always had a steel folding chair. And he always did, like, this shuffle dance where he would, like, spin around on one foot and then, like, clank his knees together like he's a, he's a spooky, scary skeleton. And, you know, of course the steel chair always came into play. He was by far the wait, one wait, of wait, the... Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. What, what do you mean it came into play? Like, like, how did it come into play? Like, he, someone would get hit with it, you know? Oh, I thought you meant in, like, his little dance. He would also, I mean, like, he would hold on to it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you, I thought you were going to, like, dancing. he would, like, clap it between his legs. And... Oh. <laughs> that, that's, that's funny. But no, um... Yeah, but he was by far the most entertaining... One of the most entertaining uh, wrestlers in that era of WCW. Like, he had a career before and after WCW. But uh, I was a big WCW kid, and... Uh, a lot of the luchadors uh, were in the cruiserweight division, like Psychosis and Super Crazy and Juventud Guerrero, and those guys are still working today. Oh, and Rey Mysterio. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but someone big just came back to wrestling who's been gone for a while. Yeah, Edge came back. That's uh, the one. For the Royal Rumble. But it's not just the Royal Rumble. Yeah, it back. seems to be for good. He's back for good, I guess. See, I pay attention to you guys in the group chat when I'm not answering. That's, hey, <laughs> all right. Hey, I do that, too. I'm bad about answering texts. Um, so, uh, who is that? Why is that important? Edge? He's. Uh, I guess we're just going to do all wrestling since we're playing the wrestling yeah, game. Yeah, it's a wrestling game. But Edge was, um, he was part of... He got his start in a stable. That's what they call a group uh, in wrestling. Is a stable, a stable of. Oh, dudes. that's insulting. Yeah. <laughs> so do they call a single wrestler a cattle then? No, I mean, a he's, cow. He's just, he's just a wrestler. A horse. <laughs> a wrestler or a, a or an a athlete, sheep, if you will, or a, a sports entertainer. Okay. But anyway, what are they classified on their tax return as? Is it, is it independent contractor? Uh, I don't know how their tax situation works, but I I've think, heard it was bad. Uh, well, I mean, probably Vince McMahon didn't get rich by being fair. Hmm. I don't I'd, know. I'd, I'd imagine he that's seems just like the what type. I've read before. Yeah. But anyway, Edge got his start in uh, a stable called the Brood, and their uh, 
their gimmick was that they were like vampires. This old man kept grabbing his crotch at you, and then he turned into a goat. Yes. Well, I smashed his his statue, and he he ain't happy. Why did he turn into a goat? Because he's a shaman, and uh, he just likes being a goat man sometimes. Oh, now you can smash the red blocks. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, that's what I was saying about abilities. You can use them for combat, or you can use them for puzzle solving and getting around the overworld. There's green blocks, blue blocks, yellow blocks, and you're going to need a different move for each one. Oh, uh, that's not very creative. I mean... It, it's it's a Metroidvania. Well, yeah, but I mean, I've been playing uh, Ori in the Blind Forest. I haven't played that one. Uh, I hear you've been talking about it recently. It's, it's very uh, it's very similar. What was that? Oh, uh, I I fell into the lake of acid and had to go back to where I was. Is that what happens Wah. when you die? Is you just go right back to the platform that you came back to? Or? In these sorts of puzzles, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's what the little dots under your health bar are. Yeah, my how many times I can do uh, the certain move. That's my stamina, and yeah, that'll that'll increase over time when I collect pieces. Well, that's one of the most important things I feel like in games like this that can be like somewhat difficult or frustrating when it comes to like hard platforming puzzles. Yeah, and that's um, the amount of time between when you die to when you get back to playing the game and trying again. Oh yeah, and the longer mm -hmm. that time is, the more of a pain in the ass the level feels like. Mm -hmm. And that's what's cool about uh, Ori in the Blind Forest is because it just like it almost like the music doesn't even stop when you die. It just kind of bounces you right back, and you can keep going and trying again. Oh yeah, I, I love games that do that. It's just like bring you back to that specific beginning. Now, and now you're fighting the Seymour, section. or no, Audrey. Audrey, yeah, fighting a few. These things are a pain in the ass if you get enough of them on the screen. Speaking of Rick Moranis, I think I saw a thing this morning that said that he was going to come back for the Honey I Shrunk the Kids reboot. They're remaking Honey, I Shrunk or, the Kids. Or, well, if he's coming back, it might not be a remake. It might just be a sequel. Oh, a direct sequel. A direct sequel to I Honey, would, We Shrunk Ourselves. I would much, ra I would much rather prefer, uh, much rather see uh, a fucking direct sequel. Yes. My words are weird right I, now. I would like to ignore the fact that Honey, We Blew Up the Baby ever existed. And, yeah, I agree. Hard, because hard I, I, I haven't seen it since I was younger, but I have like these weird flashback memories of the terrible CGI baby like crawling through the town, and the and it and, gives me nightmares. And Rick Moranis singing "Twinkle Twinkle" through a megaphone. Oh, oh, I forgot that. Isn't that just a horrible, horrible scene? Uh, that just that whole movie is garbage. It really it, is. And, not that, great and film. that's what was so good about like "Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves," though, was that it was such a good way to fix what they did wrong with the first sequel. Um, I, you know, nowadays with the movies, we'll get our Honey, I Shrunk the Kids extended universe soon. Uh, yeah. uh, pretty soon. They'll call, they'll call it, they'll call it the shrink averse Yeah, and then we'll have start to have crossovers. It's like Honey, We Shrunk the Ghostbusters. That's the oh, that's the next logical step. I would watch the fuck out of Honey, We Shrunk the Ghostbusters. Absolutely. It, no, no, it, you just start off immediately after Ghostbusters 2, and Lewis goes, moves away, and... It, like, oh, he, it starts he, a he family! Takes, well, he takes some of, like, Egon's technology with him, yes. and that's how he builds up his that's, first shrink That's right? fantastic. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Make it. Hollywood, get at us. Come on. Y you gotta do it. You'll make your money back. In, oh, in spades. Absolutely. You're going to make a shit ton of money. So, uh, what's going on here? Is this just like a... Fighting a bunch of skelly boys. Well, it looks like it's some sort of wave-based thing. It is. Okay. A lot of the fights are. Yeah, I see at the top there, two-player press start. Any, you can just, like, join in at any time. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Uh, is it just two player or four player? I, th I think it's just two. Okay. I've, I've never played this game uh, with anybody else. I'm always playing by myself, not with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I make time for that. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't use guacamole to do it. Oh, hell no. I hate avocados. I agree. Yeah, they're terrible, aren't they? They just have a weird texture. I don't like the mush. Yeah. There's very few mushy foods I like to eat. Sure. Like grits I like. Gr oh, yeah, grits are fantastic. Uh, scrambled eggs. Fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd much rather have a fried egg. Oatmeal. Though. Well, as I get older, I like fried eggs on toast more. Sure. Like a good fried sure. egg sandwich is Ooh, good. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, with some mayo, maybe a little bit of chili powder. And you can dip the bread in the soggy egg bits. Oh, yeah, yeah. And 
house. We should go to IHOP or like <laughs> Waffle House or something. Super what, Super Siesta. Yeah, a lot of oh, there's billboards in it. So, what time period is this supposed to be set in? I'm not entirely sure because everybody's like acting kind of old agey. Yeah, but there's billboards and electrical wires and stuff. Yeah, but also, I mean, there, you got a lantern hanging there. Yeah, but well, it, I mean, I imagine it's like an old rustic village, but it's modern times. Like they they've kind of integrated into modern stuff. That's that's what I'm thinking. Now, was this made by uh, an actual team of Spanish people? Or I, Mexican people? Shit, I don't know. Okay. I mean, they at least had a consultant. Well, I would hope so. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were punching the lady. Why are you? I was punching the chicken. Do you get something special for punching the chicken? Or is this nah, just sort of like latent just, Zelda anger no, still coming out? Chicken. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta get your revenge. You gotta get your licks in when you can against game chickens. It's one of those things about uh, video games that just kind of like sticks with you is that you see a pot, you kind of want to break it. You see a chicken, you kind of want to hit it you with a sword. You see a waterfall, you want to, you want to see if there's someone you wanna, behind you it. A, you get a paintball mode, you want to draw a dick on the wall. You know, it's just all these things. <laughs> just, nah, just stuff. It's just, it's just natural, you know, urges that are perfectly yeah. normal. Yeah. You put you when, when you get when your controller it vibrates, you set it right there. You know. Oh it's, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's normal. Where your avocado would normally go if you're into that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they take the pit out. I'd imagine. Oh, of course. Yeah. Otherwise, where would you put it? Exactly. You just kind of leave it on the tip like an army helmet. <laughs> We're going into war, boys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an image. So this is a boss fight. Uh, no, this is a combo tutorial. Oh, God damn it. Do we get to a boss fight in this video? Yeah. Okay. A mini bosses. We get, we fight a, a good number of mini bosses. There's and a guy in the poster. His name is La Mascara. That's not very threatening. I mean... I am... The eye makeup. <laughs> he could be like Chris Angel. Like his his gimmick is uh like he's a psychic or something. I like these three guys here with the rainbows coming out of their mouths. The Super Luca Force. I'd watch that movie. It looks I, batshit crazy. I'd watch the shit out of that too. I might I saw my bucket list. I really I genuinely want to go to Mexico. And see uh, a live Lucha Libre match. Have you seen the Conan O'Brien, uh, one of his Without Borders things, where he goes and becomes a Lucha Libre wrestler? And I have not like seen a, that. I want to watch that. I want to say that they give him a costume that's very, very similar to what your character is wearing now. To the chicken suit? Yes. <laughs> that's and, fantastic. And, and that was the character that they assigned for him. I think that's right. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Um,. Would you ever want to do that? Like, actually dress up and get in the ring and... Oh, oh no, I'm far too out of shape for that. I could never fly around like true luchadors do. Well, you could train. I could, you, you yeah, practice I could, and you I could, could try. I could train and practice and try, but I'm far too lazy and I already have too much stuff going on. I've kind of committed a lot to this baking thing. <laughs> okay, well, mm -hmm. to each his own. Sure, yeah. I mean, oh, what I the could, fuck? That's an Olmec head. That's uh, that's the tra fast travel system. The last scene on Legends of the Hidden Temple. That is that is correct. <laughs> His that, career's gone a little downhill since then. I mean, you got you got to take any uh, appearance you can get. A paycheck's a paycheck, right? I like your. So that that's the magic mask. Is the blue mask? Yeah. It just looks silly on the map screen. It really does. Yeah, I, I I like it. Uh. Of course, I'm not wearing the blue mask right now. I am El Pollo Loco. And I will be El Pollo Loco throughout the entire video. Is there? Is this one of those games also where there's like a lot of different types of costumes you can unlock and everything? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, what else is new with you? Um, let me... Um, How do you like that there Super Bowl? It was an okay game. It wasn't the most entertaining game of football I've ever seen. But, uh, 
I wish I would have done like you and probably bet some money on it. Yeah, it was good when I won the money. Because I was fairly certain that... Because, uh, I mean, it just adds an extra dimension of fun. You know, it's just like you're invested a little more. Okay. But uh, I, I knew the Chiefs were going were gonna, gonna win going exactly. into the damn thing. That's why it's fun to bet money when you know you're going to you get the money. you know you're going to get the money back. You know. And the main reason I knew that is just because... Look at them. Well, I mean, it's, it's a solid team. It's a great team. And I think they, may, they might be the new Patriots. To the be Chiefs. honest, really, yeah. I expect them to win at least two more Super Bowls in the coming decade. Okay, yeah. Well, that w- I, they'd have to win like six to be the new Patriots, though. Well, I mean, you know, they just take over um, maybe four at the most. They will win this decade, but they they kind of have to take that first step into becoming cementing themselves a dynasty because they haven't they hadn't gone to the Super Bowl since like yeah. nineteen seventy. Yeah, um, I think that I mean that would be fine. They're way less. I mean, as of exactly. right now, they're way less douchey than the Patriots. Yeah, and their fan base is, is also way less douchey. Yeah, but I think a lot of that is all set by Paul Rudd. What about what about Paul Rudd? He's a big Chiefs fan. I didn't know that. He is. Okay, he's a, he's a really big Chiefs fan. Do you think most people know that? Uh, I I people mean, who follow the NFL, I think. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you when I think NFL, I definitely don't think Paul Rudd. <laughs> Of course, of course not. You know who else is a big Chiefs fan? Uh, Dave Keckner. I know who that is, but for the people at home who may not, <laughs> perhaps you should say. He was uh, he was Stumpy in the uh, in that one movie about the the was it skiing or snowboarding? I can't remember the name of that fucking movie. But he he appears in a lot of stuff. He was the manager in of the restaurant in waiting. Uh, you know the bald guy. Oh yeah. Um. um um, You've seen him in stuff. Yeah, I'm sure he's on uh, Community. Yeah, he's, no, he's not. He's, I thought he was at least at least one episode. Like he done a guest appearance. Uh, no, he's um, uh, bu- 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 he was on that other show. Yeah, yeah, he's been on a bunch of stuff. He's the, he's one of those guys. Yeah, he's one of those guys with the acting yeah. <laughs> and well. the comedy. Anyway, let's go back to talking about guacamelee, which I actually know a lot of about. Sure. Um, not to let my previous statements confuse you. Sure. This game was developed by Drinkbox Studios. It sure was. Yeah. But you didn't know that. Uh, I mean, I kind of knew that. Oh, it's on the Switch now. Oh, is it? They released it on the Switch. Yeah. Oh, good, for, good for the Switch for increasing its library to have such a good game in it. Oh, also, apparently it has a sequel. Yeah, yeah, it does have a sequel. Oh, why, why, why aren't we playing that? How late to the game are we trying to get here? This is much where's, later. Where's this is later to the 2013. game. Nobody cares about this. <laughs> um, let's see here. Development. I'm trying to find out who the team was that made it. Oh, sure. You're trying to find out if they uh, are actually... Uh, Mexican or know anything about Mexico. I mean, obviously they know something about Mexico. It says the idea behind the Mexican theme was originally proposed by the animator. Sure. Okay. Who was the animator? <laughs> I hate these little things. I don't like uh, any game that bombards you with enemies in this like fashion. Yeah, you know, just like in all directions and stuff. I, I that's why do. I don't like those uh, top-down shooters and twin-stick shooters and stuff. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not into those. But like beat 'em ups, I love beat 'em ups. Like we I, in the last video, I talked about uh, Devil May Cry. That's a really good one. I love Dante's Inferno. See, I would. I love, feel like that's would, an underrated one. I would love to go back and uh, do Devil May Cry because I missed that one when I when I was younger, and yeah. I've never actually like. I've never played a Devil May Cry game all the way through. I've picked it up at a friend's house and like played a few levels, but I've never actually played one all the way through. Mm. And I would like to do that. It's something. worth it. Um, I hear good things about the newest one that came out. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't played it myself, but it, it looked really good. Uh, I did play DMC, which was okay. I've heard, I've heard mixed things about DMC. It was all right. I didn't that's one hate of those, it. that's that thing again where it's we're calling it DMC, yeah. but it calls itself Devil, Devil May, Cry. May Cry. 
but there's already a double there's already, because yeah, the video exactly. game industry fucking hates remembering anything for some reason. Uh-huh. Um, what is that thing? Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to outrun that thing later. That's kind of like a mini boss fight. It's not really more much of a fight uh, as much as it is, is a boss chase. No, it's the yeah, the rising lava yeah. tradition. Yeah, yeah. What's the little portal? Okay, that'll come into play later. You see how those enemies are blacked out and shadowed? Okay, so I you... have to switch portals. Okay. Yeah. That and... is, that's just like another game. I don't remember which one. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> But there's a there's some game where I mean I, I guess there's a lots of different games where you have to switch between one way to attack or another way to attack depending on the enemies. The classic uh, example that comes to mind is uh, the in Super Mario World where you have to flip on the little fence. Okay. Uh, to get the Koopas that are on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about like the what is it F Zero? Not F Zero. Those are racing. Yeah. Um, What's the twin stick shooter? R type. Oh, R type's good. It's the one where you have the black, uh, the black missiles and the white missiles, and you have to alternate which missiles you're firing, as opposed to like what enemies are coming at the screen. And it's one of those like constantly scrolling uh, shooter bullet hell games. Was that R type? I don't know. Or was that was that a more recent one that you're thinking of? No, I'm not thinking of a recent one. Uh, this is like original Xbox C arcade times. Okay, I don't. Know. I don't think it was our type. Then. Oh, you're just gonna crawl I'm just, right I'm on. I'm just gonna jump on him. You're gonna crawl right it's on up fine. his body. I ain't scared. I may be a chicken, but I ain't scared. So, what kind of games are you looking forward to coming out this year? Uh, well, I'm still looking forward to Cyberpunk, even though it got uh, pushed. Um. Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is supposed to be next month. Next month! Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of excited about that too. I hope it's as good as the first Doom I'm sure it will reboot be. Reboot was. I, I, don't, I don't see it being any worse. I think it's going to be good. What are you supposed to do with the goat? Oh, um, it, it lets me cling to walls. I can wall jump now. Okay. That's a classic Metroidvania. Classic, absolutely. Uh oh. Some shit's hitting the fan. And now you're gonna have to use your new climbing on well skill to evade the monster. A little bit? Not really. Oh. Well you should. It's more it's more moving forward. That, that would be jumping. how a video game works. Yes. So it I've seen like some people that are animals and some animals that talk like people. Yeah, uh-huh, but I don't, they're still I, animals. Yeah. Is there some sort of, like, curse upon the world that you you have to Yeah, he, there's there's a bunch of like, stuff. Like, why, why have you been resurrected and turned? Why you in particular? Because I have to defeat Kalaka. I I guess I'm the I'm the chosen one. I'm okay. the only one. And But what proof do they have that you're the chosen uh, one? Man, it's a video game. I, I, don't, I don't get it. It's just it's just kind of there. Just like you don't get these wall jumping puzzles here. Yeah, this one took me a while. Some of these do take you a while. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> but this game is super fun. If you just if if you ha- if you're out there and you haven't played it, play it. And I'm gonna play the sequel at some point, I guess. Because I really enjoyed it. This one. Are you going to be able to go through those rocks eventually? I have to go you back. You get like a shoulder charge where you can smash through really heavy boulders. No, you can't go through there anymore. Uh, they're not I, co- they're not colored blocks. Yeah, I have to go back the way I came because I went the wrong way. I just unlocked a new path to go back to where I was before. I see. Yeah. That yeah. happens to me a lot. Oh, so there are doors that you can only access in the right worlds, too. Doors, platforms... See, that type of stuff, I don't know if I like, because it's the type of thing I would forget, like, between playthroughs of right. the game. And then I'd come back and I'd be like, wait, where the fuck am I supposed to go now? <laughs> I think the last really good game I played in this, like, uh, genre was the um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I want to play that. Oh, one. man, Bloodstained is so good. Yeah, if you like that, you'll love this. If you, well, 
if you like Castlevania, yeah, you'll love any of those. You'll you'll love Bloodstained <laughs> because it is Castlevania, just not just not Castlevania, just not in title. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! I like the way that the shadow skeletons look. Like that's a cool. Yeah, it's a really design. cool silhouette. It really is. I agree. And you can't hurt him at all while he's I cannot shadow. hurt him at all. Well, then how can he hurt you? Because that's what? just how the game is designed. They have to have that little extra challenge. What's, what's the internal logic for how he can uh, switch his attacks into the shadow realm? They just they, oh, oh, and they're doing both. And of they're them doing like this. and they're doing both of them like oh, this. It just it just adds just to the the difficulty of the fight, you know. And anything to add that difficulty to the fight, which is fine. I mean, if it were easy, it wouldn't be worth doing. Tell that to uh, game journalists. Yeah, got them. Hey, wait. <laughs> no, the hashtag not all game journalists. <laughs> what? Okay. What does that mean? Uh, that, if I get two more of those, my stamina meter increases. Okay. Yeah. There's the heart, and then there's the sugar skull. The heart is for health, obviously, because, you know, that's what hearts typically are. Now this is a unique little puzzle. You have to like go back and forth to get the platforms underneath them to disappear and then get the next one to disappear and then you have to like dunk them into the lava. All while dodging bones. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of neat little puzzles in this. I think mean, it's not much of a thinky puzzle. That one's puzzle. not much of a thinky puzzle. They get they get thinkier. You think so? I do I do think so. This game got pretty good reviews when it came out. Uh, well, of course it did. It's phenomenal. It was nominated for the 2013 Independent Games Festival for Excellence in Visual Art. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, Juan will appear as a playable cameo character in the upcoming Wii U and PC game Hex Heroes. I don't know what Hex Heroes is, but Juan deserves to be in Smash Brothers at least. Both Juan and Tostada appear as playable guest star characters in the Wii U game and Rumbo. Rumbo? Are, are they in Brawlhalla too? I think I Juan, think Juan is, is also set to appear in Indivisible as a playable party member. Wow. Juan is getting his name out there. Look at Juan. Also, Juan appears as a playable character in the fighting game Brawl Out. Brawl Out. Not Brawlhalla. Not Brawlhalla. It's a different game. I know it's a different game, but I didn't know about Brawl Out. Various outlets, such as Engadget, have compared Brawl Out to the Super Smash Brothers series. Well, I mean... According to this Wikipedia I, article. It sounds like one, so... See, well, this is see. one of the mini-bosses I was telling you about. Oh, yeah, this does sound like Smash Brothers. Have you heard of this game, Brawl Out? I've heard of it. Brawl Out is a fighting game in which two to four players fight against each other in an environment with various platforms. The game features 25 playable characters, including guest fighters from Hyper Light Drifter, Guacamelee, Ukulele, and Dead Cells. Oh, wow. What a weird combination. A, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, having, having an indie game-style Smash Brothers just sounds like a really cool idea. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, and it would, be, it would be cool for other, like... It would be nice if it was something which was constantly being updated. Yeah. Where like other indie developers, if they like, say they, um, if they could send in so many like art assets and animations and stuff like that for the game to just constantly, you know, be adding new things, mm -hmm. just so people could get like their games noticed. That would be neat. And then you'd have this big indie game Smash Brothers that had like five hundred people. You know. Oh, exactly. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Get on that. We should do that. Yeah. How do we do that? How do we, how do we do that? How do we do that? I guess we need to make a fighting game. Google. How we do that? Well, <laughs> I guess we gotta buy this game. We gotta buy Angry Mob Games. Who owns you already? Publisher. Merge Games. Merge Games. These are all new... Oh, they're in the UK. New names to me. Is all done with Unity. Sure, sure. We have Unity. 
We can get Unity. I've got it. Yeah, you've got it. Yeah. I had it at one point. I can get it again. It looks like you're lost again. I sure am. I do get lost. I hate that in maps where it's just like, hey, this away. This, yeah, that away. But how? <laughs> that kind of shit only works in an open world game where you can kind of get there no matter what. Right, exactly. Especially when the worlds are like connected by portals. Oh, well, there you go. Yep, big. There yep. you go. Well, I mean, it's kind of. It's kind of obvious. They're like, hey, just go up. I'm just like, up? I like how you just see that but, room. It's like, nope, fuck that. But there's a ceiling. Yeah. I do that to a few rooms. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm just not going to do this. Yeah. Plus, I think it's not even integral to like getting up into the where I need to be. And so... Now that you found him, you can just I can go back. I can go back between uh, him and the one in town. So is this one of those where like you have to go back to town every now and then to like buy stuff and upgrade? Uh, no, because you can upgrade and buy stuff at every shrine you see. It also okay. auto saves your progress. See, that was something that I, that a lot of games do that I don't really like is they force you to go back to like your main hub area. Yeah, and um, that's what. Uh, I mean, not just Dead Cells, because, I mean, that's a roguelike. You kind of have to Yeah. you're going to start off in the same area every time. Sure. But Bloodstained, like, you constantly had to go all the way back to the very beginning uh, area. and Oh, shit, know, really? Well, that's just where, like, the, the store, that's af after you meet people in the world, it's like Dark Souls. You know, you meet yeah. them in the world, and then they go back to your base, and you can go there to, like, buy equipment or upgrade items and stuff like that. But, yeah, you would have to... You know, save your game, go to a teleporter, teleport back home, and the teleporter back home is still like two or three screens away from the home. So you go there, you kill two dudes, you go back to your house, you upgrade your weapons, you save your game again, then you teleport back out and take the two rooms away, and then, you know, it's just a, it's unnecessary slog. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where you could just as easily, like, have someone who could do that thing closer. Oh, that's a pisser. Yeah, the, this this puzzle is uh, deceptively a little, little bit of a. Well, uh, it's because like you can't prick. quite tell exactly where the hitbox for the room change thing is. Oh, sure. Because sure. it's an amorphous blob, and yeah. when it's amorphous like that, it makes it hard to do like precision jumping because you're never quite sure how close you can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't. No. I can't go through. Oh that. no! I can only uppercut through that. I oh, can't no. do anything else. I don't have the butt slam yet. That sounds dirty. Well, I mean, it's not. It's a legit move, the butt slam. It's not. You ever play that game where it's like, is this a real wrestling move or not? That is that a game? Yeah. How do you play? You just kind of like say some gibberish and it's either a wrestling move or it's not. You, you actually do pepper in real wrestling moves. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise it's no fun. Yeah. Uh, like, uh... Well, this will be easy to play with me because I don't know yeah, what you wrestling know. moves. Uh, uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Oh, I think that definitely is. It is not. Okay. Uh, sh a Shining Wizard. No. It is. God damn it, okay. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. <laughs> Well, I guess you're just going to have to quiz me because I don't know when Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. We're going to see how you do. All right. Okay, all right. Uh, Alabama Jamma Slamma. No. It is not. Okay. You, that is That is correct. You have one. Yes. <laughs> uh, Although it should be. That's a great move. <laughs> Back uh, when Jim Sterling was wrestling in Mississippi, that would have been perfect. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, the five-star frog splash. That's a yes on that. That that one is. That sounds like one. That one is one. So tell what is a five star frog splash? A five star frog splash is when you Besides uh, my new band name. <laughs> uh, a five star frog splash is when you uh well a frog splash is essentially. Okay. Uh, it five, doesn't have to be five stars. Five star was tacked on by Rob Van Dam. Oh, because he wanted to make it like he, extra it, cool. Yeah, it's his it's right. his own thing, it's extra cool. So, so it's just a flashy five star frog splash. Yeah, it's just a flashy frog splash. Uh, a flashy frog splash. You, you get onto the top rope, top turnbuckle, 
Um, and you just you jump. Well, you you squat all the way. Okay. And then you and, and leap. to a frog like yeah position. to a frog like position. And you leap. And then you kind of like bring your arms out, and then you kind of like pull pull your core out, like just kind of arch your spine. Okay. And then you lurch yourself forward again and bring all your body weight. You know, you kind of jump like a frog onto your. It opponent. sounds like you're you're like belly frog. Belly your belly flop. flop. You're basically belly flopping on okay. onto them. This is the weirdest goddamn sport. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's sports entertainment. It's, it's, it's what they call it. Isn't all sports sports entertainment? I, I mean, sports are sports. What, what, sports well, entertainment. Yeah, but but sports wouldn't be broadcast if it wasn't entertainment. I mean, <laughs> granted. Well, like, no one would be paying and watching if it wasn't. <laughs> but there is a difference. I mean, big difference between like football and baseball and you know, pro wrestling. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's that's sports entertainment. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, let's see. More, Texas Cloverleaf. Yes, is it is a wrestling move. It absolutely, absolutely. It's, see, and, and and that is. sounds like it would be the same exact move as the five star frog splash. No, Texas Cloverleaf is a ground move. Okay. Texas Cloverleaf is like a sharpshooter, but except putting your leg in between their legs and flipping over, you use your arm. The the motion you did for using your arm just now. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> Yes, it was kind of a fisting motion. I was going to say it looked like you were um, impregnating a calf. Or uh, stuffing a turkey. Give me another. It's fun. Stuffing a turkey. Yes? No! No! <laughs> <laughs> stuffing a turkey is not a wrestling move, for, honestly, fortunately <laughs> enough. <laughs> I honestly wouldn't have been surprised. But there is... Um, um, there is a stuffing the ham, which is totally different. There is a wrestling... There is a tradition in professional wrestling. Every Thanksgiving, there is a wrestler who dresses up in a turkey outfit, and he is known as the gobbledygooker. What? Yeah, you heard that right. He's the gobbledygooker, and he wrestles in a... This in is a, a real thing. Yeah, this is a real thing that With happens. real professionally wrestlers. Yes. Real professional wrestlers. On who, television. Yes. They dress somebody up in a... In a turkey outfit. Every year. Yeah, and they call him... Never the, heard about The gobbledygooker. And what do they do to him? I mean, he's he's either in like a, a... A parody match, or a throwaway match, or he takes a dive or something, or he's in like some weird sketch, or... You know, just... They always do something just off the wall with him. Okay. Just for entertainment's sake. They don't stuff him. They don't know. They do not stuff the turkey. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if my poor heart can handle that <laughs> on a WWE program. You gotta get those ratings, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard with the internet nowadays. You gotta compete somehow. Oh, it really, it really is. Oh, <laughs> who's this mummy lady? That's Tostada. She's what? my, she's my spirit what? guide. Tostada. 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 Like the, like yeah, the like like the food. Yeah. Oh god! This is oh, that here's the thing. This is that boss chase I was telling you about? Oh no! I like I like the look at him too. He's cool looking. He's really cool. And so in those situations when uh, you just have to avoid him, yeah, you just kind of have to let him destroy the terrain so you can go through the next part. Those are the really uh, iffy, scary situations. It's like you're not sure whether you should stop and switch it out and fight him or keep on moving. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but, I don't like that. Ah. Yeah, see? See? Ah. See? See how close he is? <laughs> it's a very suspenseful uh, boss chase. Well, I'll tell you, it's no uh, it's no Aladdin in the magic carpet. No, that's for sure. Oh, my God. He, yeah. What? Yeah. You saw that correctly. What? Yeah, they're doing... You can't, you can't just do that. They're doing a Bowser. You can't just do that. No, they're just getting back to their roots. That's all. That's all that is. You gotta remember your root. You gotta remember where you came from. It's me, Lucador. <laughs> Man, that would be fucking terrifying to see Mario in a Lucador mask. If oh, the question man, they, is, is what would they do with his mustache? They should do that. No, it'd be outside of the because they have they have ones that uh, don't cover your mouth too, and it just doesn't cover the mustache okay. either. But they should do that in the next Odyssey because they did make, so, him a, make him a Lucador. Yeah, they should make him a Lucador. Is they did the they did Sombrero Mario. Yeah. Why why not Lucador Mario? Um, didn't. So I never played uh, Odyssey except for like at a Nintendo Switch kiosk once. Um, did you play a lot of? I did you have not. Odyssey? I did not oh, play Odyssey. Switch. I have a Switch, but I don't have Odyssey. How does that work? 
I, I thought, how I thought, do you have a Nintendo system and not have the Mario game that's on it? Yeah, I, I thought, don't understand. I thought the Nintendo systems came with the Mario game for free. No, no, no. You have to pay full price for a Mario game, my boy. What kind of world are we living in? <laughs> no, when um, when we got our Switch, uh, the only game we had on it for a long while was Breath of the Wild. What's going on here? And then, oh, I had to go pee. Oh, nice. Yeah. You could. I mean, I, I could have just edited this out, but yeah. I wanted it to be raw, organic gaming footage, which is why I left in the previous pause for the banana bread. I had to take a piss pause and a banana bread pause. And immediately you just roll right off the and edge. And I roll right off the edge when I come back. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Meow. What are the Orby? Oh, okay. Yeah. Heart, you got a heart piece. And a heart piece. Are we going to do a Zelda homage later in a boss fight where uh, the boss will like explode, I guess, and then you have to step into a cylinder of blue light and you lift up a heart piece above your head? No, nah, they don't do that. No. Nah. You don't get heart pieces that way. Oi! What? See, <laughs> you are following me. Yeah, the dialogue in this game is hilarious. But what's weird about that, though, is that he didn't say that when you came in from the other side. Yeah, because I came in through the top. But because you came in through the top. But it should have been programmed to say that just the first time you met him because you met him. But you see it there. Yeah. So it's weird. Well, back then I didn't have to go to town. I didn't have to go back to town, but now I do. And he's just like, hey, I can make this easier for you. So, oh, so I guess he was, yeah. was he not activated as a teleportation device? No, yet? he was. I could have okay. gone back to town and then gone back to where I was, but since I needed to go back to town as the next part anyway, and I was pretty much done with that part of the map, uh, at least as this part of the story goes. What are, uh, what are the benefits to going to and from the town? Well, I mean, there's always uh, stuff that needs to be done in the town, and also... Yeah, like take old ladies' trash out and wash their linens yeah one of the quests I picked up is because there's side missions too not just uh, the main story I had to get uh, the ingredients for the perfect enchilada I needed to get some beans and some cheese and a lot of tortillas okay yeah and uh, you know everything's just connected to it you know you just have to go through that Get like little bonuses and stuff like that when you yeah yeah complete you, the tasks yeah you can help people and you can get currency and just it's just fun side work, you know, when you're not trying to save Presidente's daughter. So, yeah, I guess that's true. You did. You mentioned that before, but you're trying to save the daughter of the president. Yeah. So this is just, you, you could really look at this, this as Resident, Resident Evil 4. 4. <laughs> but the villagers aren't trying to kill me. Yeah. It's fine. But they're still speaking Spanish. Yeah, exactly. And it's Mexican Spanish, which it here makes sense, but in Resident Evil 4 it was weird because we were supposed to be in Spain. Yeah. But, you know, Capcom's just kind of eh, on uh, cultural appreciation with stuff. Yeah, a little bit. See later Resident Evil games for that. <laughs> uh, this motherfucker tries to shoot me. Oh, shit, look at him. I like him. That's hothead. Can you, can you play as him? Uh, as far as I know, no. I mean, he's probably in that brawl out. This doesn't, this doesn't do a Shovel Knight thing where it re-releases the same game but with five different characters and new levels? As far as I know, no. This is the, the Super Championship Edition, which I, I guess has got other content in it. Hey, he's giving you money. He's giving me money. Yeah, that's cool. He tried to shoot me twice, but he's out of bullets. He's like, ah, oh, fuck it. Here's, hey, have a tequila. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, this fellow. Where I live with my barrel connection? Yep, my barrel collection, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash it. Why? <laughs> because you get things from barrel. The horror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just mean. Yeah, we're... I'm not a good person. I try to be a decent person in real life, so, like, I'm just, I just act an ass in video games sometimes. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So you're probably wondering why I don't just go up. I can't cling on to that green wall. Why not? Because it's, it's, it's slippery. So you have to go this way? Yeah, uh huh. Well, what if you got stuck down here and you didn't have all of these moves already? I don't think they would let me 
do that? Oh, because the bar wasn't open. This is the bar. Okay. Yeah, the bar wasn't open until after I got. Is, it, is this like what you came back to town to do, or is this a side thing? This is a side thing. Okay. Well, I mean, it is what I came back to town to do because I had to. Th this the barrel thing is a side thing. Under the bar is a side thing. I originally had to come back to the bar to talk to the flame guy. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. I thought this was a big gap here. I was very surprised he was able to walk across it. <laughs> I thought like all the kids were stuck on top of like a ledge and they were gonna fall over. No, this game is is amazingly well put together. It's cute. I'll give it that. It's a lot of fun. It's fluid. Like you feel good when you when you progress through it. I mean, you feel good when you progress through any game, really. But this one, it just feels particularly good. Well, I'll tell you, we need uh, we need as much feel good stuff as we can. We sure do. Given today's uh, lack of Iowa caucus results, still Iowa cock up, and uh, never forget the fact that they're going to screw Bernie out of it again. You know that, right? I don't, give a, I, don't, I don't care. I just wish I don't care who wins. I don't care I'll, as long I'll, as I can vote for someone who's I, not Donald Trump. But like the fact that they just make it such a frustrating thing. Oh, I like, know it. Like. The, the rules that they have for their stupid back work, backways shit that they do in Iowa for voting is insanity. And the fact that they're using an app on phones app. at all is, it's moronic at this point. Like, just fucking write it down. Just fucking go back to punch cards. It ain't that hard. Right, it's not. It's not. You, you, can, you can get a mechanical machine that's not connected to the internet that can still read punch cards faster than a human and get all this shit done in one day. It wouldn't be that difficult. We used to do a bunch of it. Absolutely. Like, libraries work better than this. A lot of libraries are doing away with the Dewey Decimal System. Have you heard about this? Uh, I'm surprised it's still around. <laughs> I respected the Dewey Decimal System, damn it. I have no strong opinions on it one way or the other. <laughs> I think that now that we have search engines, it's rather unnecessary. Because yeah, well, you can just pull search words instead of having to look at the numbers. One of these days, our technology is going to fail us. Well, that's true. But until then, did you hear that the library is offering uh, you to download, to rent books onto like your Kindle from uh, at home online? So like you can just get a book from the library, have it sent to your Kindle for a certain amount of time, and then it'll go back. Or, you know, you'll lose access to it or whatever. But then you can just check it out again, right? Yeah. It's, but it's, it's like a library, but instead of having to go to the library, you can just get it on your Yeah, get it on your, your you, app. You can borrow it. But how do you borrow something electronic that anyone can access? Is, can multiple people access this book? Yes. Or once it's checked out, no, it's no, checked I out. No, I imagine anybody can access it. Oh, okay. But it's more of just like you're because you have a library membership, you're renting it. You're renting possession of it for this amount of time. Now, is this if, like a paid premium library membership, no, or it's, just it's a traditional? It's just straight library. Stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, what library is doing this? All of them? I don't know. Which which library have you heard about doing this? I don't know. I just heard about it. It's, it's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Yeah. I, okay. I just don't have any details. Sure. I would imagine, since we live here, it's the Live Oak Public Library system. Okay. Yeah. But I, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't have a Kindle. Well, I don't either. I, I don't a, even really like reading books I, on a screen. I don't read, like reading books on a screen either. I, I read things on a screen all day for work. When I get home, I like to read books yeah. on books. I'll read comic books on computer because... I have uh, I have a DC Universe membership, so I have a huge. Oh, do they like email you comic books whenever they come out? No, I just have access to their backlog. Oh, they have like a library. That's cool. Oh yeah. Oh, oh that poor bastard that had to digitize all the comic books. I, I imagine they had a team of poor bastards. <laughs> a team of poor bastards with exacto knives, just like running it down the page and feeding it through a scanner. Oh my god. Whew. And depending on when they started, you know, it could have taken so long. So so long. Well, they're adding more all the time, so they're in they're in the process of still digitizing it. I think most comics after a certain time were drawn and scanned digitally as they came out. I that think would make, that would make sense. Yeah. Well, so all the modern stuff is already there. So they're having to backlog well, I, I all the older stuff. Well, I imagine just for uh, yeah, at a certain point, 
in like I guess the 80s or the 90s maybe, it would become easier to scan and send to distributors and uh, publishing companies to like have it printed just straight from that as opposed to, you know, hand copies of everything. I don't know. I don't read comic books and I don't know a lot about them, so I don't know a lot about how the industry works. I do still love my tangible paper comic book collection, which will probably send my future children to college, provided there's still a collegiate system and a country by the time. They... Or people that want to read comic books. Or, so yeah, or people like, who want to read comic books. You know, books. Disney could drive the whole industry into the ground in the next ten years just from oversaturation if they're not ah, careful. Don't you put that evil on us. And then all of a sudden, no one, not even like the hardcore fans, are going to want comic books anymore because everyone has them, and it will be too much. You'll, they're they're going to be like, hey, you know what people like? Superman number one. Let's reprint 700 of them. Oh, man. They'll probably do that at some point. Uh, let's see. First Superman came out, what, 1939? So in about nine years, we'll probably see another printing of Superman. A 90th anniversary. Well, they'd have to do something to hold on to the copyright. Well, yeah. I guess since he's still a uh, well, he, a character who's being used. Yeah, they're still they're still using. Him. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're never going to lose those. I, I don't think. I mean, un until they go under, which it would be Warner Brothers' fault. I, I'm I'm thinking. Speaking of Warner Brothers, we got two Mortal Kombat movies coming up. Isn't that weird? I hope they're good. One's animated. One's not animated. Yeah, the the one about Scorpion is animated. Yes. Yeah. Because you know, if we're gonna have a Mortal Kombat animated movie. Ed Boon's got to make it about his favorite buddy. Yep, absolutely. I like Scorpion too. Ed Boon's got he's got decent taste. Yeah, but did you see the trailer? Like it's called Mortal Kombat, whatever Scorpion's Revenge. But yeah. the trailer is just straight up the Mortal Kombat story again. It's just like it's Mortal Kombat Nine again, <laughs> which in itself was Mortal Kombat One again. Nah, they need to just uh, focus on Quan Chi. Uh, what is it, the Shirai Ryu? Yeah. Killing the Shirai Ryu and blaming it on Sub-Zero. Yes. Yeah, uh, well, basically I thought that they would just, like, if they could retell the Sub-Zero mythology story. Yeah. But just, like, if they wanted to even do it from Scorpion's perspective, that's fine. That's, just yeah. Just that story, you know? Yeah, just that story. Um, and then the Covenant in, and Scorpion enters with Quan Chi, and then his revenge plot against Sub-Zero. Well, to be fair, Sub-Zero did kill Scorpion in the very beginning of the Yes. Mythology. Yes. They, they, Quan Chi, but he swore, but he still he swore revenge. So yeah. that was still there. Yeah, because because mythology starts off with Quan Chi getting Sub Zero and Scorpion both to go steal the map to the Temple of the Elements, uh, and yeah, yeah. they find it at the same time. And then in canon, you're supposed to do Sub Zero's head rip fatality on Scorpion and send him to the Netherworld. Sure. And then you encounter him again. Well, that's the thing. Is like in mythologies, if you and it never tells you. It's like, hey, you're supposed to do the fatality here. It's just the first time you get a chance to do it, and you have five seconds. Sure. So you yeah. don't do it. But if you do do a fatality on him at the very beginning, when you're when you finally make it to the Nether uh, Realm at the closer to the end of the game, there's a special cutscene you get to see where like Scorpion's ghost confronts Sub Zero about killing him and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that that was always really cool to see. Oh yeah. Yeah. But. You know, a lot of people didn't see that because they had to play through Mortal Kombat Mythologies to do so. <laughs> Which is, is another story. Also a side-scrolling game. Not like this. Right. Oof. You know what side Mortal Kombat game I really enjoyed? Shaolin Monks. Uh, Shaolin Monks! That was the only uh, okay one. <laughs> We should do a video on that one. A late to the game on Shaolin Monks. Um, to be fair, I don't know if that would fit the criteria. Shaolin Monks has been featured on this channel in the big oh, that, video. That's that's true. Yep. Okay. That's that's fair. If you wanna if you wanna be that pedantic about it. M's the rules, man. <laughs> All right. M's the rules. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> Be as pedantic as I want. I'll pedant all over no, your face. Please, please don't pedant on me. It is bowling for, for. What are these things? I don't know what to call these things. They're I have a few names, but they're all, they all sound jerk -asses. offensive. Yeah. They remind me of the little. Um, the enemies in the second Mummy movie. 
Oh, you remember yeah. the little tiny guys with the spears? Oh, yeah, yeah. They remind me of critters. Remember critters? I do remember critters. Yeah. What is about 80s monsters appearing in toilets? I think uh, monsters appearing in toilets is a big thing in a lot of cultures. I mean, yeah, that's a big fear. It's like you don't want to get your organs ripped out through your butthole. I've never ter been terribly scared of a toilet. No, neither have I. Um, oh, wait, no. I have been scared of one movie toilet. Wh which movie toilet was that? Did you ever see uh, Look Who's Talking? No. The movies with the babies and it's voiced no. by Bruce Willis. And no, I, I, I've seen ads for them and it was enough. And all that. They're not great. They're kind of funny. Okay. I, I loved them as a kid. Uh, you know, when I, when I was like you know, maybe nine or ten. I was like, right. these, these are funny. You know, that John Travolta, he's something else. But but the toilet... Oh, look how times have yeah, changed. Right. The, the, uh, the talking toilet in that one. Terrifying. Okay, well, I, I've never been terrified. I, there's a talking toilet? There's a talking toilet. Okay. It was just the baby that talked. Well, Is it like, look who's talking, and then everything starts talking eventually? No, it's just the baby. Now the chair is speaking. It's, it's not Pee Wee. Uh, it's uh, it's the, uh, the babies and the dogs eventually talk in one. But this, uh, the kid, the main kid, he's like af afraid to use the potty. Right. And uh, he like has this like day nightmare about the toilet. And he's just like, give me your pee pee. Get, get, uh, uh, we're talking about pee pee here. Uh, uh, what's what? the hold up? And I think it's voiced by Mel Brooks for oh. some fucking reason. Okay. And he's got like blue hair on top of his head, but also in his mouth. And he's got like big, horrifying, not quite googly eyes, but kind of. Right. And sharp, he's got sharp toilet teeth on his <laughs> lid. There's a sentence. Yeah. Uh, just. Just, just look it up if you get a chance. Okay. Look, look who's talking, talking toilet. Nightmares. A nightmare fuel, man. Well, at least back then for me. If I saw it now, I'd probably think it was silly. Um, you know what got me around that same age where you were there is the um, the air conditioning unit in Brave Little, Brave Little Toaster. Toaster. Yeah. The air conditioning unit from Brave Little Toaster was fucking terrifying. Sure. Um. I don't have reasons like you do for yours. Oh, I, sure. I just remember, recall very strongly being not <laughs> You're happy. being not about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, you remember the scene in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit where the judge who was the bad guy, like, he, he reveals that he was the toon who yeah. killed Eddie's brother and his eyes pop out of his skull and his yeah. voice gets really squeaky? Also very scary. Okay. That one didn't get me. Um, yeah. The very beginning of Mortal Kombat, uh -huh. when uh, Shang Tsung's face turns into a oh, skull. Oh, turns into that skull, yeah. yeah. When, when that happened for the first time, I was just like, whoo, shit! Yeah. Like, because you just weren't expecting it. No. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. And I was, you know, seven or eight at the time, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did it! Yeah, I did it. Woo. Yeah, nice little jump puzzle. Oh wait! I've got. I think I've got one more piece. Yeah, there. but the one piece you have left is just like the very the bottom. bottom jaw. Why is it so disproportionate? <laughs> like why are they the had, they had to the, make it four the four first, pieces? The first oh, it's four pieces. Uh, this one's four pieces, I think. I thought it was like because it looked like it was going to be three. Oh, it might have. I think but, I, I thought I just got the third one. It might have been. No, the second you just one. got the second. One. Oh, okay, so it is three pieces. Okay, but so the last piece is just the bottom jaw, though. Yeah. That's weird. Ah. Well, it looks like this uh, video here is almost over. Yeah, this is the part where uh, I'm just like, I'm a little bit lost. Oh, I've been playing for over an hour. Okay. Oh, good. Quota met. <laughs> I like the little fish. Yeah. Like oh, those things are jerks, though. Oh, are little they? Little spinny fish. Oh, I see. Yeah. I had to fight a whole room, room of them for a minute ago. Well, not fight them. More like dodge them. They were just there during the fight. Call that the magic heart syndrome. It just happens to show up. And <laughs> just, splash just or, there. splashes around. Get some experience. Those frogs hurt you. Or those frogs. Fro those are not frogs. <laughs> and no, those crabs do not hurt me. They're just there for flavor. Sorry, I was thinking about the uh, the flying crab jump wrestling move. 
That's not a wrestling move. Sorry, flying crab grab. Also not a wrestling move. Grappling crab grab. That should be one, but also it, not. It really should be. Yeah. All right, uh, here's this. Okay. Soft shell crab grab. Soft shell crab grab? Yeah. What is it? With butter. With butter? Yeah, because uh, that's how the announcers would say it. It's like, oh, he's got him in the soft shell crab dab. Put the butter on it. But, yeah, what kind of move is it? It's, it's where you, you get them in your pinchers. Oh, okay. And, you, you know, stick your crotch in their face? I don't know, wrench however them, wrestling works. Wrench them back and forth? Yeah, you, you <laughs> get you get your pinchers around one of their arms, and then you yeah. just kind of go, kick, 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 until it pops out a socket. Oh, that's a Kimura lock. They can't do that. That's illegal. But you have crab claws on. Uh, I think that's a little more acceptable. Okay. That's that's your uh, that's your character. Uh, I'm the crab, and you just kind of go around pinching people. It's not even your match; you just pinch people. But why? I actually why think are you Vince, saying it like Vince McMahon would actually probably go for that gimmick because he's fucking crazy. Why do you say pinch so weird? What pinch? You ever see that? Uh, I, I think it's like a Jeep commercial. There's like a little crab in it, and it's like kind of set up like twelve ounce mouse, but it's like a realistic like right. toy crab. Uh, and he's like talking to a Jeep for some fucking reason, and he's just like. Pinch and then and then Jeep, oh, and then the, yeah, yeah, the Jeep's that was like forever ago. no 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 pinch and he's like yeah. why they no, had him in, why they no had him in like newspapers with like it was uh, like they had the entire words cut out yeah. and sitting above the little cartoon yeah yeah so pinch all right yeah but anyway dogs playing poker all right well this was late to the game episode four with Waka Melee I enjoyed myself good we always do we always do yep all right we'll we'll see you guys next time. Take it sleazy. Yeah.